<laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're. And I'm watching. I'm, <laughs> so so as, it, as it should be. So we have a very special guest that we would like to introduce to you tonight. One of our idols, and you may recognize her from ESPN and the SEC Network, Olivia Harlan is here to join us. She's Hi, also, oh, hey, <laughs> she's also a fashion icon and has her very own side hustle that she's been working on in her IG bio, so peep that. So Olivia, welcome, and so glad to have you here with us. Thank you guys so much. Sorry I cut you off. It's so <laughs> no, good in talking in the intro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as one of a female uh, in the sports career, what would be some advice that you would pass on to the next generation of women, us, anyone in the uh, women in the sports field? I guess my biggest thing for uh, women or men is the internship value at the college level. And even before, I interned at a local news station when I was in high school, and I would just drive there after school and shadow a reporter. Um, and she was a couple years out of college. She went to Mizzou, which has a great journalism school. And I just remember thinking she was so like feisty and fiery and determined. And I think I kind of soaked that up and then turn that into my own thing. And then I've always been really uh, passionate about helping out the next generation because I've had so many great mentors along the way. And I think internships is where you get that first exposure of that. Classes are great. Journalism school is great. But I did, I did my biggest heavy lifting outside of my journalism classes in college. So um, women or men, I, I just think get your hands on a camera, get in front of a camera, get those reps. Um, it's just invaluable. I think people think you – if you can talk in front of a group of people, you must be able to do it on camera and nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah, so for we sure. We've seen that as interns at the Players' Tribune together. So that's <laughs> yeah, that's how we met. Um, and, you know, we totally see that. And I think that's why I immediately reached out to you because I was like, she's so confident. You know, she's so out there and she like, she knows her stuff. Like there is no doubt in her mind. So how do you prepare yourself for games? Like how do you get pumped up? Is there a routine? Like what do you do? Yeah, oh, I, I'm very regimented during my football season especially because, you know, every Saturday you have a game, and so you fly to your destination every Thursday, but your week of work starts way ahead of that. Usually I find out my Saturday game the Sunday before, so you have six days. Right. So on Sunday I try to let my mind kind of go to mush. I'll do my expense reports. I'll write my thank you letters. I'll kind of tie a ribbon on the last week's game and usually fly home on that Sunday. And then um, Monday, we have a production call. Tuesday, we have a call with the visiting coaches. Um, Wednesday, we kind of tie up loose ends, but we're constantly emailing each other. And that's myself, play-by-play, -play, analyst, producer, director, graphics. We all have to be on the same page. Um, and there are so many things that you bring to the table in terms of your preparation that may never go on air and also may not come from you. I might send our graphics guy, you know, hey, look at uh, completion percentage on third down of this quarterback from this time last year to now. And it might just show up on your screen a little bit and you'll never know who it came from. But I, it's such about teamwork. Um, you know, it's, it's so much, let's get the most and best information on these two teams every week. And let's give the audience something that's memorable, a good story, a good fact, a good player to watch that maybe hasn't been talked about a lot. So um, the research at times, you'll just be reading every story you can get your hands on on certain teams and then one little thing will stick out to you and it might be from a local beat writer from you know August and it just sticks with you and you're like okay let's dig further into that let's as a team let's all look more into this um, so the work is as much as you want to put into it but you're always going to get better quality when you sacrifice a lot of time throughout your week to do each team justice and really learn them right wow that sounds like a crazy schedule and you're working two jobs right now or only one? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm technically off till football season right now, so I'm working no job. Okay. You're okay. okay. Aren't you in Wisconsin right now? I am. I'm in Wisconsin. Um, Sam and I are here for the majority of the summer, and then um, we'll go back and forth to L.A. But, yeah, I, I, I always have the summer off because I do football and basketball. But this is my first time nice. in the NBA. I did college basketball this year, so I had an wow. earlier start to my summer. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm all ESPN now. I was with Fox and ESPN the last four years. And wow. um, summers in Wisconsin are my favorite time of the year, so. <laughs> oh, they're gorgeous. There's still like piles of snow, but it was like 60 degrees out today. It's, it's really nice. 
I mean, yeah. I'm in Chicago right now, so I am feeling the same. Right. right. Um, yep. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> You're engaged to Sam Decker, who is yeah. my boy from Wisconsin. <laughs> um, and he's on the Clippers. You guys have serious great couple goals on Instagram. We love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have to ask, how did you guys meet? There has to be some, Sam, did Sam? We have to know. We have to know. There must be some good story. Did he slide in the DM? Like we did with you. It was kind of the old fashioned way a friend introduced us. Actually, a friend of mine who's going to be a bridesmaid and was a good friend of mine at University of Georgia dated one of his college teammates and they ended up not working out. Sam's looking at me because he's like, no, they didn't really date. (laughs) They dated. I hope she doesn't see this. She kind of had a thing with one of his college teammates. And then as that fizzled out, she said to me a long time later, she was like, you know who I think is the perfect guy for you? And she said, Sam. And at the time I was covering the Atlanta Hawks, the NBA, and Sam was um, going into his second year with the Rockets. And I was like, no way, not dating a player. Like rule number one, don't date an athlete. Right. And um, she just kept promising me. She's like, he's different. Believe me, he's so different. You know, he's, he's not a player. He's grounded. He's got a nice family. Like, he's, he's all about it. It's a good endorsement. really good endorsement. <laughs> yes. No, so was, was he, like, perplexed by your sports knowledge at first? Like, what, it's odd that he's in the room. Sorry, Sam. Um, <laughs> but, like, how did that work? Was he like, hey, that's him. amazing? Let's ask him. Come here, hen. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> Were you perplexed? Hey, hey Sam. Hi, how's it going? Um, Good. How about you? Great. I'm great. No, I wasn't perplexed because I knew that she did, and I knew her background and her family and um, sports kind of run in her blood. So I, I, I knew she was, you know, well versed in everything. And um, also, I saw you know her stuff with the Hawks and college football. So no, that, that never. I uh, like our first date was watching the Packers together. So I, I think we, we <laughs> there you really, go. Started off on the right yeah. foot. Yeah, sports was a central point of our relationship from the start, and I don't think that'll ever change. Wow, that's a great quote. Thanks. That was that was that was amazing. That should be in your wedding video montage. We'll send you the clip. <laughs> yeah, it's a big role reversal in our house. Oh my god, I love it. So, so when you're, you know, reporting on all these games, how do you deal with criticism, especially with social media now? You know, I can't imagine it being really fun all the time. I always say if someone goes after a fact I said, that really gets under my skin because I, I work so hard throughout the week. I, I check my stuff. I don't, I, if I make a mistake, it's not going to be in something that critical. So if someone on a, you know, tweet or something says, you know, you, I don't know, that wasn't right. They had seven touchdowns, not five. I don't know. And I'll always go back and I'll like screenshot the stat sheet or like, oh, that (laughs) That hits you deep. That hits you deep. (laughs) Um, But my first year with ESPN, I had, we had a huge package and we had a lot of eyeballs on our games, big audience. And um, I was 20, um, I was 22 that year. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. It was a lot At age of 22. Yeah, I went from a Fox regional package and then to like a 3 p.m. good Big Ten ESPN game. And it just, it was a lot to take in at once. And yeah. I would get every time after I did a hit and my phone would be in my pocket and, you know, I'd go back around watching the game, working on the next thing. And um, my phone would just like be going off and I would get more – tweets and I ever knew I could get and um it was really hard because there's some mean stuff like I would I had no joke I would see Olivia Harlan's the ugliest person I've ever seen and I was like all right or like Olivia Harlan sucks who hired her and then you'd get like Olivia Harlan's better than Aaron Andrews and you're like why are we even compared we're not like you yeah know. so I just learned oh my gosh one these people don't know what they're talking about I don't think yeah. I'm the person they've ever seen. <laughs> I also don't think I'm the next Aaron Andrews. So on the other hand, I the old adage is, you know, never take too much stock into criticism or praise because they can be equally damaging. Um, and so that New Year's Eve, my New Year's resolution was to not search my name on Twitter. And I can't say I've been perfect at it because sometimes you're just curious, like, do people like that? Was that good? 
Um, but I've, I've remained pretty true to it because I became obsessed for a couple of months. Do you read the <laughs> comments on your comment section? On like Instagram? Yeah, on Instagram. Well, I mean, obviously you respond to people on Instagram, which is great, but <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, do you yeah, like I do. I, I think the, the hardest thing at first too was if it's any like guy and you know, when they play a, a game in a sports bar, the sound is off. Yep. So someone's literally just seeing you. And I always, I still have a problem with that. Anytime I am in a sports bar and I'm watching another game and I'll see, you know, Pam Oliver come on or something and you can't hear her. And I'm like, yeah, oh, I know how hard she's working. And it just sucks that that's how people watch games. But I, I, I totally understand why. But um, yeah, anytime I see something that's just about my looks, I'm like, well, what about what I said? Did you hear what I said? Right. I'm like, I, I worked really hard on that. So I was here to do something else as well. It is what it is. So that's a great yeah, answer. Yeah. That's a great answer. So your grandfather was the executive of the Green Bay Packers, Bob Harlan, and your dad, Kevin Harlan, was also a sports re reporter. Mm -hmm. Was your love for sports always there? And also, how did you separate yourself from your family's legacy to make your own name and status for yourself? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I, I grew up just watching not only the not only just the access to sports and being, you know, courtside at stuff, being at games, being on the football field, but um, I just saw the dedication and the hard work that my dad and grandpa had and the sacrifice, you know, holidays they would miss or, you know, they, they weren't, they couldn't be at everything and they weren't like other dads. They weren't home for dinner at five o'clock. And um, I, I just grew up thinking, boy, that's, that's some weird job. And I want a slice of it. Like, <laughs> I just, I respect my dad more than anyone, and I guess I just, in some weird way, just want to be like him, and so to separate myself from it is, um, I don't know that I want to or have to. Um, I do, when I introduce myself to people in the business, I say, hi, I'm Olivia, not Olivia Harlan, because I want to stand on my own, but right. I'm so proud of his legacy that if it comes up, I kind of light up. We're going to play a little game. We played it with Josh Jackson and Saquon Barkley. But just some rapid fire questions about more so getting to know you. So LeBron versus MJ. LeBron. Ooh, first one that we've gotten for LeBron. Or right, why? You're just curious. Me. Why? Because the talent he goes up against, and this is one you don't want Sam to get in on because he's very passionate about this one. Ooh. The talent I don't want to hear it every night is so different than what MJ played. Um, totally different game of basketball. But the, the science and the technology that these guys do to have these, like, freakishly strong and fast bodies is not what they had in the 80s and 90s. So Right. So and I the other about that the other day. The other thing that I would say about that, too, is that LeBron makes everyone that plays around him better, whereas Jordan was a little bit more selfish and didn't really pass the ball. So it's much easier to take it for yourself as opposed to, you know, distributing it out to others. Right. No, that's very fair. And then you have to look at his stats versus MJ's with that in mind, knowing that. Right. Well, look at look at the way the team's winning and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so who's winning this, uh, the NBA championship? Um, I hate to say it because it's Sam's former team, but I think the Rockets. <laughs> um, I, I think this is the one year in the most recent history that Golden State's been as vulnerable as they are. Um, injuries now, Steph's going to be out longer than they thought. And you just never know – you kind of, we kind of place them on a pedestal, but I, th I think this is the one year that they're more vulnerable. And this is exciting though this year because it's one of the years where a different team will yeah. potentially win the championship, which is really exciting for all of us. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's <laughs> I wish it had been last year. <laughs> yes, uh, and so do we. <laughs> uh, brutal. All right, your favorite workout place? Equinox. I go to Equinox in LA. Um, I went to one in Houston, and they're just so clean and nice like you could go and just walk around and put the eucalyptus towels in your face oh yeah, good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. have you ever tried any of sam's workouts with him yeah and we're actually going to um he's working with the trainer up here in sheboygan and i'm gonna kind of off to the side like do like half the reps half the weights because he's getting ready for the fourth season in the nba but i'm getting ready for a wedding and i don't know who has more pressure <laughs> good. Good. when's your wedding <laughs> july 14th so coming up that. coming yeah. up that's good. super exciting how's the planning good good um we're actually going up for a tasting it's uh gonna be in door county wisconsin we're going up for a tasting 
this week and it's kind of the last detail. Everything's pretty much buttoned up. Wow, that's gonna be amazing. Can't wait to see the pics. It's gonna be great. <laughs> so who do you admire and look up to? I mean, you said your dad, but is there anyone else in the industry? Um, gosh, I have a long list. I, <laughs> Sam Smiley, <laughs> I'm gonna say him. I'm not <laughs> and then I think my favorites are, um, I, I think Tracy Wolfson, first and foremost, because I shadowed her a lot when I was in college. She had to come to do Georgia games. And she's such a pro, and she's so well-respected by coaches, and um, she's just something to aspire to. Um, and then I love Lisa Salters, Pam Oliver. Um, I'm trying to think of the ones that jump off. Um, more on the hosting side, I, I love Rachel Nichols. I think she – I mean, just longevity in this business is – your biggest accomplishment, right? Because every right. year after year, and whoever's kind of last man standing, you've got to disrespect that. Um, within ESPN, though, I have so much respect for women I work with Laura Rutledge, Holly Rowe, Molly McGrath, Chris Button. Like, we have a powerhouse of reporters, oh, yeah. and I'm really proud to work with them. So, what's the most exciting game you've ever worked on? Oh, gosh. Um, there's nothing like NBA playoff basketball, and I feel like those games I did with the Hawks, because all three years I was with them, we went to the playoffs. First year, they went to the Western Com Eastern Conference Finals, and then next two years, they went to round two. And those games just, oh my, every possession, every basket seems like life or death. Um, so I've had great, you know, double, triple overtime football games, and those are nuts. And as a reporter, knowing you are talking to the winning coach or the winning player, and you have, you know, two notepads in your hand, like, <laughs> what am I going with? Um, <laughs> As a reporter, that has you on your toes enough. But, um, gosh, I think playoff basketball. And then covering college basketball, I think college basketball, March Madness is, like, the best time of the year. Obviously. Right. Right. Yeah, that's oh, so fun. I didn't have – I had a conference tournament games this year, but I didn't have, <laughs> but I, I didn't have um, any of the NCAA tournament games. But I had UMBC in their conference championship game before – the game before they beat Virginia. So, yeah, so cool. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So have you ever had a fangirl moment? I, I don't know. I think, okay, I, I've got one. And maybe not a fangirl moment, but not a kind of, um, holy crap, I'm sitting and talking to this person, Nick Saban. He's, I think, the scariest, most impressive person I've ever met. Um, I don't know. I had an Alabama game last year, and I was so scared the whole time. <laughs> but uh, it was very cool. And, we saw on Instagram that you have this little side hustle of your own, your fashion Instagram. So we just wanted to ask you about it. Like, how did you think of that? And how's that going for you? Obviously, you have amazing styles. Like, what are, what are your favorite stores? Like, we're dying to know. Well, yeah, I, I kept getting so many DMs and questions on my comments and even on Sam's comments if he put up a picture of us. And I was like, you know, it's my off season. And yeah, I'm wedding planning, but I'm not doing that much else. I was right. like, I'm going to start this little fun thing. And so the people with fame, it's, a, it's kind of like the like to know it. Um, they approached me and asked if I would want to do a storefront. And so I list and send links to stuff I wear. And it's been really fun. I've, I've enjoyed it a lot more than I thought. Um, it'll be harder to keep up with once the season starts. But right. for the summer, I'm, and Sam laughs, I'm like always on my phone now updating it and trying to find a sale for something or a coupon code for something because the whole point is to do things on a budget. Yeah. Um, right. I get this from my mom. She's She always is the best dressed person in the room and always looks head to toe so put together, but she is a bargain hunter. And I've gotten that from her. I'm the same like with stuff around our house. And um, so no, I was like, and I would tell my friends that, and they're like, no, I, I just go to you know, Nordstrom and just pick out stuff. And I'm like, well, you're wasting your money because you can do a lot better somewhere else. And I just want to share that with the world. That's such a fun So topic. true. <laughs> Have you ever had an, an embarrassing on-camera moment? I mean, I remember my college reel is like... Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, uh, I, I showed Sam some of the first on-air work I ever did, and I was... 15 and it was at a oh my god <laughs> so rat and my voice is so high and squeaky and i just i just am holding the microphone and just thinking i got it going on and oh it's so cringy <laughs> bachelor or keeping up with the kardashians or neither because you're boss no neither and 
it's worse probably arguably but housewives i, I knew that was coming i am so <laughs> And I'll like, I'll just binge watch. Housewives like, of Atlanta. No, I, I like Beverly Hills and New York and New Jersey. I kind of watch, I don't watch Atlanta and I don't watch Potomac, but I watch all the others. I have two sisters and then my mom and we have a group text and we're like, oh my gosh, I love Kyle's new house. Or what do you think of Melissa's outfit? So that's our group text. <laughs> I love, I love that that's what you're also discussing while at the same time, like looking up stats from five years ago for who well, knows my release and I during the week and during the football season everything I read I don't read for fun during the season because I'm reading so many articles and then if I have some time to watch tv I usually throw on sports center or something just so I can kind of simultaneously ingest the news and um but then if I'm like okay I want to not think for two hours I'm going to watch some housewives and talk about not thinking you like become a zombie <laughs> or that. that's so fair yeah. I love it I love it so last, last question for you. What is something about you that very few people know? I love to sing. And when I was in college, I was really into writing music and, and country music especially. But I love singing jazz and country. And um, so I got on this huge kick of writing music. And I wrote like 15 songs. And I recorded three of them in Nashville. Um, and it turns out anyone can do that, by the way. You just need to have money. So I took every dollar I earned in college while working for georgiadogs.com and covering our sports teams. And I spent it all on recording three songs in Nashville. And then I, I kind of decided, and I got really into it, and I would just jump in my car and drive from Athens, Georgia, to Nashville. It's about four and a half hours. And I'd do that every couple weekends. And um, I didn't really tell people what I was doing. And um, But still now I have these – three songs they have you know a whole band and backup artists and they sound really professional and so I'm proud of that but um that's something a lot of people don't wow. know about yeah. that's amazing Where that's amazing they? yeah can we find them no. them as our intro music yeah <laughs> I never released them I never like put them anywhere that's so cool that's a great fact and I have them on like a cd mm, like I'll listen to them sometimes <laughs> uh, that's that's so nice though that's yeah, awesome I just thought if that is such a pipe dream and then to make it in sports broadcasting is a pipe dream. And I thought I can't chase both. I got to focus on what I really want to do. And that was this, but who knows, maybe one day I'd, I would dabble back into it, but yeah. I love it. Yeah. We'll be fans then too. Cool. It's all Thanks. good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We really, really appreciate it. And this was so much fun. Yeah, um, you were awesome. You're you. literally our idol. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Enjoy Sam's tilapia. I will. <laughs> and your wedding and your fashion blog, everything. Have a blast. Thanks, guys. Really Bye. Fun. Thanks, Olivia. Bye. Bye.